Hi, my name is Daniel McKinley, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Nuclear War. This is the 50th anniversary, and I thought this was a special occasion because this is our 100th episode on how to play. So I'm going to teach you how to play this game that we've been demoing for years at the shop, and I hope you come check it out. So in Nuclear War, players will be playing as competing countries at different sides of the world. There will be two different times of play. One will be time of peace and one will be time of war. That will matter depending on which cards you are playing and I'll explain those in more detail later. For setup, every player draws nine cards. Taking turn order, you will play any secret cards from your hand. Also before setup, you will get a number of these population cards which range anywhere from 1 million to 20 million people depending on the number of players in the game. In this example I have a two player game and I have it set up where we each have 15 cards. Well, on your turn, you have, if you have a secret card in your hand, you must play it and then follow the instructions on it. Like this one, the summit talks, it says you have tricked the enemy into an ineffective but time consuming summit talk. His wasted efforts result in a loss of one turn. So they would lose one turn. You would continue playing these, like, without a trace, 25 million of the enemy's population mysteriously vaporized. So you choose an enemy, and they lose 25 million people. Pretty dra dramatic, of course. And like this one, secret, ban the bomb. 2 million of the enemy's hippie pacifists pr protest nuclear war and defect to your country. That means you effectively steal 2 million of their population. So you take it accordingly from their deck and add it to yours. The game is going to continue until all but one player has population remaining. The player with population remaining is the only population or only country remaining in the game and therefore the winner of nuclear war. However, there might be a time where everybody loses. I'll explain that in a minute. So you continue until you have nine non-secret cards in your hand. Uh, then you have a setup where players place down cards face down onto their first face down and second face down spot on their mat. I have shown here because on your turn you will flip up the first face card, face up card and resolve it. Then you'll draw a new card and then place another one down as your second face down card. Now let's talk about how the cards actually work. You already saw secret cards which have to be played immediately. But you have a number of different cards. You have warheads, which show you how many megatons they, they are and how many population they destroy. Then you have carriers, like this one, the Saturn Miss Rocket. This Saturn says that it can carry one warhead up to 100,000 or 100 megatons. And you have cards like this anti-aircraft missiles, which can be used as a deterrent force or played from your hand. And finally there are propaganda cards. Propaganda cards make it so you steal population from other players. The game starts at a time of peace. War hasn't happened yet. So these face down cards you will likely be playing pop or uh, propaganda cards because propaganda can only be used at times of peace. Of course, you're not going to convince people if you're warring with their country. So if I were to play this card as my face-up card, it says 5 million enemy defect to your side. So I choose another player, they take 5 million population from theirs, and I add it to my population stack. This continues until the very first bomb actually deploys. So allow me to explain that. If you have a bomb going off, you need a warhead and a carrier played, the carrier has to be played first, and then the warhead after. So, as you'll see, on a future turn I might play this as my face-up card, the Saturn. That doesn't mean that the next one will definitely be a warhead, and time of war has not started yet. That just means everyone should probably be a little nervous about my, car about my card. Because, if I play another carrier, then nothing happens. I just continue drawing cards and playing them. But, if I play it as a warhead, in this example, this Saturn can carry one warhead up to 100 megatons. Well, this is a 20 megaton warhead. This then kills 
five million people. So I would choose a player. They will lose five million of their population. That would go into a discard pile here. And then, oh, I'm sorry, before we add that to the discard pile, we would spin the spinner. This spinner does a number of different effects. I know you can't see it quite on the screen because the font is kind of small and there is also an app for it, but this will do everything from making it a dud warhead to tripling the yield. A lot of dramatic things. So right here, this says, missile booster explodes, no launch. So in this example, I actually would not have destroyed their five million because it was a dud. However, because of that, no bomb went off. It's still a time of peace. Propaganda cards still work. Now, if that bomb did go off, then they would discard Let's say I double the yield, making it 10 million population are destroyed. They are discarded, and now it is time of war. Propaganda no longer works, and warheads are the only way to, to remove population. This continues until at least one country has been completely voided of all of their population. Then, if in a three or more player game, it would return to time of peace. You would take up your face down cards and then you would play two more face down, now propaganda cards could still work. Because now it's time of peace. However, I talked about how there might be a chance where all the players might end up losing. There are anti-missile cards that will stop certain warheads. So like this example, anti-missile B, can intercept B-70, Atlas, and Polaris. If a player played that, I can play it out of my hand and prevent them. Also, if I play it as a face-up card, it goes into one of my deterrent forces, and it's stored for later use. I can hold up to two of those. However, if I'm not able to deter them and all my population is gone, I then press the red button, as it's called, where I uh, play all nine cards face-up and face-down, and I play them immediately against one other nation, destroy, potentially destroying all of their population. If that does destroy their population, then they get to push the red button and do the same thing. And that continues until there's one nation remaining, or all of them have played their cards, or everybody has had mutually, disturbed, <laughs> mutually assured destruction, and nobody wins. And that's how you play Nuclear War. As you can see, this has been one of our favorite games that we have ever demoed. This has been around for more than 50 years. It is a classic as far as I'm concerned. It is incredibly fun. This was made before games were meant to be good and were just meant to be fun. So, come check out Nuclear War. If you want to try this in person, you can come by Zia Comics in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where I'll teach you how to play Nuclear War. Get nerdy with me. Tell me what game that you get on. Is it card or What kind of class do you play, girl? In an RPG.